Zambia's Faith Musonda demands her money back. Faith Musonda writes from Johannesburg. Hello good evening countrymen and women as you may be aware of the story circulating on social media concerning money, I can confirm that law enforcement agencies went into my place in New Kasama and forced caretakers to open my house of which they did search and found the said amount, but at no point have I been involved in politics that money is from the business that I do with my partners all the documents are available and I do pay tax, the money was scheduled to be deposited on Monday. I and my business partners we have engaged lawyers as I'm out of the country and I will be back next month in October but for now, our lawyers are handling the matter and I wanted to let you know that this is my official page I will be live today at 21 hours to show you whole documents because I have seen you implicating innocent people, at no point have I involved myself into an illegal business or to associate with politicians no. Faith Musonda Faith Musonda's lawyers say she got the millions from Emerald Sales, Inspector General of Police Zambia Police Headquarters Independence Avenue Lusaka Dear Sir RE, demand for immediate release of ZMW 65330000.00 and USD $57350.00 We have been retained by Faith Musonda, kindly therefore note our interest. Our client informs us that sometime on 17th of September, 2021, your officers purporting to act on a tip-off from members of the public unlawfully broke into our client's house plot F-206, New Kasama, Lusaka. Our client informs us that she is Avis to the party who provided the information malified but she will address that at an appropriate forum. Firstly, our client wishes to clarify on your baseless assertion that she is currently on the run. She informs us that on the 9 of September, 2021, she left Zambia for business meetings in USA with her business partners who currently have business portfolios in Emerald and Diamonds Mine in Zambia. For avoidance of doubt, kindly verify with South African Airlines Ticket 22 under Passport ZXY 20137853. She further informs us that she is scheduled to return to Zambia on 13th of October, 2021. Secondly, the money in question is ZMW 653000 and 57,350 US dollars are monies that were legitimately obtained as proceeds from the sale of minerals through the Mines Chamber of Commerce. Kindly note that our client did participate in the auction of emerald held at Mulungushi where through her partners she secured emeralds valued at 6 million US dollars. All the statutory fees, royalties and taxes were duly paid and transactions recorded by Bank of Zambia. The money found in the house was meant to be deposited on Monday to which the informant was well aware and took advantage by reporting the police due to the dispute he had with our client. In sum, the money is not tainted with any illegalities. By reason of the foregoing, we have strict instructions to demand as we do the return of the money within 48 hours to be paid to our firm. In an event that you fail to adhere to the demand set forth above, our client and her partners shall commence court process in international court and as an interim measure, all assets belonging to the Republic of Zambia situated in foreign countries will subject of a freezing order to secure their interests. Kindly comply to avoid the rigmarole of the attendant legal and financial inconvenience. In the interim, kindly acknowledge receipt of the letter by signing and returning the accompanying letter. Yours faithfully. MIM Legal Associates underscore member of International Legal Network of Lawyers underscore. About Faith Musonda Some years ago when she could not get the job she desired at the Zambian National Broadcasting Corporation, ZNBC, Faith Musonda packed her bags and headed to South Africa. She only had the physical address of the radio station where she wanted to work, and a lot of determination. But then, this is what has always driven Faith, determination. When I arrived in South Africa, I went to where Trans Africa radio offices are. When I told them why I was there and what I wanted, the man I found laughed at me in disbelief, says Faith. But Faith was not one to back off or stand down easily. She got the job. Before she went to South Africa, Faith worked as a volunteer broadcaster straight from school. I wanted to be a reporter but back then, being a TV presenter was just an entry point and was not a respectable position, says Faith, who now runs her own TV station. Faith was told to wait until an opportunity opened up, 
but she decided to leave and follow her dream into uncharted waters. Born and raised in North Mead, Lusaka, Faith is one of six siblings. Her father was a Sunday school teacher, cell group leader, while her mother was involved in the Christian women's ministry. She attributes her strong character and perseverance to her strong Christian background. My siblings and I are very hard-working because of how we were raised. We saw our mother work hard after our father died. We saw how we had to depend on God because there was nothing or anybody else. So trusting God and believing He can make the impossible happen was a strong reality for me, says Faith. Her career in broadcasting and marketing now spans 18 years. Faith started her primary education at Nkwasi Primary School before attending at St. Mary's Secondary School, where she completed her grade 12. Then she became a volunteer for ZNBC Radio 2. She says her biggest inspiration in broadcasting was her own uncle and well-known broadcaster, Fred Chunga. I have always wanted to be a broadcaster, says Faith, who started honing her broadcasting skills while still studying at Evelyn Hone College. The she had a small stint with Mondo Music, a record label owned by Chaisha Falatia. But she still continued as a volunteer broadcaster at ZNBC. I volunteered at ZNBC with Nabwalia Bwalia every weekend for four years until I got an internship, she says. Then she also worked for Choice FM Radio, before moving to 5 FM Radio, but she did a full circle and found herself at ZNBC as a reporter during her internship. After her internship, Faith applied for a job at ZNBC but was instead employed under programs as a presenter, a move that prompted her to relocate to South Africa. My knowledge about Trans Africa Radio was through my time at Choice FM Radio. I worked there for a while with Chilu Lemba showing me the ropes about media in South Africa, she says. After that, she joined Southern Sun Pretoria where she worked in guest relations for two years. Her biggest break in South Africa was when she joined the South African Broadcasting Corporation, SABC, as a TV news anchor and producer, making her the second Zambian to work there after Maureen Kondu. I later decided to return to Zambia because they needed a South African for that position and I wanted to come back to further my studies. Back in Lusaka, I started pursuing my Bachelor's of Science in Communication, she says. The mother of two later joined Airtel, then Zine, as a presenter for the Abelia show with popular comedian Bob Nkasha on ZNBC TV and then another show called Beyond Limits. Somehow, she found herself at ZNBC, but was never satisfied with her pay, so she decided to start a laundry business, catering to busy young career women in her neighborhood. I went back to ZNBC and started as a TV presenter, the same thing I ran away from. I was later made producer with TV2. While there, I started Debate Time and Faith Gospel Hour on Sundays, she says. She was later promoted to commercial producer under the marketing department after they commercialized Debate Time program. She rose through the ranks to become head of channel for TV2 before she was moved back to marketing as creative and promotions manager until she eventually left ZNBC. While at ZNBC, Faith started the One Voice Choir Competition and Junior President. I enjoyed doing projects that impacted people's lives, she says. My belief in media communication is that what we do ultimately must improve someone's life practically. But Faith had her eyes set on something of her own. She started working on the licensing of a TV station. One of Faith's inspiration was Media Morgue's Drive Masiwa. When she left CNBC, she joined Econet Media as public relations and branding marketing manager. She says the move to leave ZNBC was so she could go into another competitive environment because that was pay TV in order to learn the business. The death of one of her closest friends, Faith Kandaba, also inspired into establishing her own TV station, Life TV. I left Econet to set up my own TV station, Life TV, on Topstar Channel 112. Life TV started as a ministry through sermons from international preachers and gospel music then we commercialized it to ensure its sustainability. We currently have 20 members of staff, she says. Faith, who was recently appointed as Zambia Development Agency, ZDA, Communications and Public Relations Manager, credits a lot of people who have shaped her professionally. She says working with Standard Chartered Bank Head of Corporate Affairs Christine Matambo helped build her public profile 
professional persona and taught her professional etiquette and networking at senior management level. Other people who have had a big influence on her include Frank Mutubila, the late Medio Fieri, late Ben Kangwe and Caristo Chitamya. The person who has groomed me in my career is Kondamondo. She literally held me by the hand and introduced me to the world of broadcasting straight out of school. All these experiences have built me up to this place where I saw a scripture come alive that your gift will bring you before kings, she says with a smile. Quoting her favorite scripture in the Bible that no eye has seen, no ear has heard and no mind has perceived what God has in store for you, she believes that how far a person can go in life is not close to the plans God has in store for each person. To crown her career, Faith is the recipient of the 2017 CO Global Africa's Most Influential Woman in Media for Southern Africa. The award under South African Leadership Organization identifies women who have excelled in their field or career in different countries in Africa. The experiences in my life, especially when growing, up taught me to be humble, accountable, and taught me that the little things count in life. It has taught me that there is no substitution for hard work, she says, 